our, our, our um, foray into COVID came really after looking at some of the literature and some of the early signs of how inflammation are contributing to the morbidity and mortality of those patients. Uh, now our drug is really targeted more for a chronic uh, respiratory uh, indication, but as we observed early on, many of the inflammatory cytokines that 1923 downregulates um, play, are playing a role here in, um, in COVID pneumonia patients. Uh, in addition, we noticed that the receptor that 1923 binds to, which is called NRP2, it's a receptor, a cell surface receptor on, on T cells predominantly, um, <clears throat> was observed to be upregulated in um, some of the lung tissue from patients that had unfortunately died from COVID-19. So with this concept that inflammation is playing a role and our receptor biology may also be um, uh, expressed during this response, uh, we thought testing one dose of uh, two of our two of our known doses, safe doses in this population might be useful. We approached the FDA. Uh, they they understood our rationale. They thought a drug that is targeting interstitial lung disease could be really useful in this form of interstitial pneumonia. Uh, so we launched a trial, a small trial in 30 patients testing um, a one milligram of our drug administered once uh, a patient is hospitalized. Uh, or three milligrams, or or placebo, which in this case was standard of care, uh, which evolved to be dexamethasone and remdesivir more so. So we're still digesting this trial uh, results that just come out a few days ago. Uh, what did it show? It showed that one dose of one of our um, one of our higher doses tested, three milligrams per kilogram, uh, reduced the median uh, time to recovery uh, to 5.5 days. Um, I think this is a a very intriguing finding just after one dose uh, to see folks being able to get out of the hospital um, under a week. Um, background dexamethasone or remdesivir was used in almost all of our patients. Our placebo population um, had about a six day recovery. Uh, maybe not a large difference, but it can mean a lot to patients. Uh, and also that placebo population um, perhaps may have overperformed when we look at the other dexamethasone improved patients. Uh, so we're still learning a little bit, but it is a signal that uh, our drug on top of standard of care seems to benefit uh, patients here. Again, it was a 32 patient trial. We're still learning a little bit about. Um, I'll, I'll point out the, the major thing that I like to focus on these sort of trials is the drug was safe and well tolerated even in this very, very sick population. We had an independent drug safety monitoring board help us through this process. Um, so this also bodes well for our sarcoidosis trial, uh, to see activity of one of our doses, uh, to confirm that the drug is still safe. But this is important for that sarcoidosis population. And, and we'll learn more uh, from this trial as we start to look at the data a little bit more closely. So we're, we're a little bit further you know, back in, in, in the line here. A lot of the repurposed therapies and, and certainly therapies that are in phase three are the ones that have um, really been used uh, early on. Um, have not really seen one emerge with significant benefit thus yet. Um, with our data, we would need to move into a phase three trial. Uh, we will have some discussions with the government and government agencies around how to proceed. Uh, I would like to see um, a little bit more data about hospitalized <clears throat> patients on dexamethasone in particular. Um, we know dexamethasone can be really, really useful in uh, mechanically ventilated COVID patients, but in our trial, seems to be that it may also help them in if they're not uh, mechanically ventilated. So we're gonna continue to look at some of the data coming out, see where we fit in. As a small company, we can't do it all. Uh, we really are focused on sarcoidosis, but it, we, we could have some utility here um, in COVID pneumonia patients. Um, it could be some applicability in other forms of viral interstitial pneumonia. I think it opens up some avenues to use our therapy or at least a dose of our therapy in acute indications. Um, but as I said, we're gonna be data-driven and just sort of see what occurs here uh, with the evolving landscape of COVID standard of care.